Hello again, it's Jess or Jashi Curran, and in today's video I'm going to be taking you through how you can make a variety of different weekly layouts using the same initial three columns per page. I'm using something similar to this in September, and I thought it would be cool to show you some different ways you can tweak this style to really make it your own. Before we get started, just as a reminder, all of the equipment that I use in making today's spreads is linked in the description box below. For today's video I'm using my purple LT1917 which has 38 squares down and 26 squares across per page. This is the same as the scribbles that matter except for the fact that the scribbles that matter has one extra box going down the page. In terms of the initial three columns that I'm going to be using in these layouts, I'm looking to have each column being eight squares across and then having a gap in between each column. For September I've left these gaps out and I've given myself two columns across on the side of the page. But for the purpose of today's video I'm going to be going with this style on the right here. Using some basic math I'm pretty sure you can figure out that if we have three columns per page it means you're going to have six columns per spread. The way I typically like to use this is doing one day per column with the weekend sharing the column on the right. Although this style of layout is super basic there are a heap of different ways you can customise it. Some of the different ways you might want to do this are laid out on this spread here. On the left here I have a variety of different column headers that you could use to personalise your spreads. So working from the top down you could do something like this with small flags where you have either the initial for the day inside the flag or maybe the number for the day. Instead of separating out your column headings you could do one long running bar across all of the columns. And then even if you decide to keep them in the individual columns themselves, you can change up your fonts and the way that you colour in those boxes. You could have flags running from the side rather than from the top. Or something like a feature square that has again either the initial of the day or the number of the day. You have two different ways that you could make it look like there was a ribbon wrapped around each of the columns. So one where each column has its individual ribbon ring and one where the ribbon weaves in between the columns. If you prefer not to have your title sectioned off, you could just write it onto the box. And there's also the possibility of using different pen colours or different pen thicknesses to make it stand out. Of course, this isn't a complete list. There are plenty of other styles that you could use. These are just a few that came to mind. In terms of the way that you actually use those boxes, you could do a variety of different things. For instance, you could use your boxes kind of like a schedule, so having the numbers down the side either with two boxes per hour or one box per hour, or if you prefer, you could just use a regular to-do list layout. For September, I've sectioned off my check boxes so that they fit into small squares. And the key that I'm using is listed here. To personalize it further, you can also play around with different divider styles, either just basic lines in different colors, dashed lines, dotted lines, or things that are a little bit more decorative. You can keep those three columns in one large block like we have here for this schedule, or you can separate them into smaller boxes. Some of the ways or reasons you might want to split your boxes could be that you want to section off different task lists or group tasks that are the same. So for instance, if you were to split yours into two different sections, this could be for AM and PM, or it could be work or school and personal tasks. And if you were splitting it three ways, you could be doing something like morning, afternoon and evening, school, personal and work, or possibly just grouping your to-do lists and your events separately. And then of course you could want boxes for other different modules. And by this I mean things like your habits, the weather, meal logs, any kind of tracking that you wanted to do, possibly doodles, gratitude or memories, and other kind of things. Given this is just a really big jumble of ideas, I figured we'd go through a couple of different spreads that use some of these elements to see how you could use this style of layout yourself. The first one we have is just the basic layout. In this one I've decided to make each of those columns slightly shorter so that I could include a notes section down the bottom here and a running to-do list over here. In this one I've also used some small decorative dividers to section off the top part which would contain an events list. To show you guys what this one would look like filled in, I'm just going in and adding a few random events and tasks for this hypothetical person that would use this spread. I'd also like to take a moment to apologise for the brightness in this video. 
The settings on my phone weren't quite right today, which mean that a lot of these shots look really blown out. Although on this spread I've sectioned off my events to be at the top of each box, these could quite easily be incorporated into running to-do lists for each day, which is the style that I usually prefer to use. I do however think that the decorative divider adds a nice touch to an otherwise simple spread. Depending on how you'd need to use this one, you could always make this notes section and to-do section a little bit larger and make the to-do lists for each of the days of the week a little bit shorter. If at the end of each day you still had a lot of room left in each of these columns, you could fill it with different things such as a gratitude or memories log, or maybe some doodles, or something similar. This next one is more suited to school students, or possibly teachers. For this one I've taken each of the columns and split them up into different chunks which could represent school periods in a regular day. For Saturday and Sunday, I've split these into two different sections and then also included a note section down the bottom here. I've also included a before school section at the top for this hypothetical student that has six periods during each day. After writing in all of the individual periods, the remaining space could be used for things like homework that was due or assigned, or anything else that you needed to remember for each of those. If you kept these in a regular order, it would be quite easy to remember which was which. However, otherwise you could use small icons to indicate what kind of tasks you listed here. For the before school section, this could be where you list any tutorials that you have going on, or any of the things that you need to remember to do before school or bring with you to school. Typically I like to use my notes section for reminders for the week that's coming up. The one I've got after this is probably more useful for university students or people who need to keep track of time sensitive events. As I've made this one with university students in mind, I've also put in small sections here for work that might be due and study that they might want to schedule for each day. The next layout would be for someone who would prefer to have their tasks split up into separate sections. So for instance into work related, home related and then personal related tasks. Of course these sections could be modified instead to reflect time periods, so maybe be morning, afternoon and evening, or something similar to that. Although in this layout I've drawn out individual boxes for each of my tasks, you could quite easily just leave these as a running bullet list, which in turn would make the spread look a little bit more open and would take a lot less time to set up. For this one I've given roughly an equal amount of space for each of the three categories. However, if you knew that one of these wasn't going to have as many tasks as another, you could always change up how many rows you gave to each of these ones. For our last weekly setup in this video, we have a layout that's a little bit more modulized. So for this one, each section of the layout is drawn separately. So we have a separate title, an events box, a to-do box, a box for a daily doodle, and then some additional boxes down the bottom here for various trackers. For the sleep, water and steps trackers down the bottom, I've decided to use a line graph. However, you could also use a bar graph and get another kind of nice aesthetic. For the habits, I'm using individual icons to represent each of these to save space on writing out what each of those habits are. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. Hopefully this video has been helpful in inspiring you guys to try some new things in terms of your weekly spreads. And hopefully it showed you that you don't really need to do anything too crazy difficult to actually get some good variation in the spreads you're already using. Thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, comments or feels, please do leave them in the comment section below. If you hadn't already, you can subscribe to my channel to see the videos I release every Thursday and Sunday. And until next time, bye!